general partners in the lead of Cherry Beckert's technology and life sciences practice, Ms. Dawn Patrick. It's my pleasure to introduce the final set of the top 10 innovators. My firm, Cherry Beckert, is proud to be a longtime supporter of TAG and the Summit. And in particular, it's, we're proud to be a part of the Top 40 Innovators Program. I've served on the selection committee myself and my colleague, Matthew May, uh, co-chaired the committee this year. And I know we're accountants, but I can tell you it's amazing to be a part of that process. And I know from listening about the companies today and hearing the remainder of the presentations, we can all be very proud and impressed of all the innovation that's occurring in the state of Georgia. So with all that said, uh, the last group, uh, and I'd like to introduce Solo Health, Bart Foster. Good morning. Uh, I'm Bart Foster. I'm CEO and founder of Solo Health, and I'm joined today by a number of esteemed colleagues with the company. And we're excited to be here uh, for a number of reasons. Solo Health is a technology company. We're focused on self-service healthcare. We're empowering people to take care of themselves by placing interactive kiosks in high traffic retail environments, places like Walmart, Sam's Club, Safeway. And ultimately, we're reducing costs of care and we're improving access. Over the last year, we've had a number of significant milestones. We're now a class two medical device. We have FDA approval. We've gotten two issued patents We've raised over $45 million in capital from some of the strategic partners that you see. Coinstar, who owns Redbox, they made one bet in healthcare. A lot of people don't know that. They made it with us, and they're an investor in our company, as is WellPoint, Dell, and others. And we've had over 10 million people sit down and use these kiosks. But here's the innovation. Here's the technology. What started as a vision screening kiosk when I was in the eye care division of Novartis has morphed and now it's a complete health and wellness station that are in high traffic retail environments. You sit down as a consumer, you're answering a series of questions, and then based on your age, your ethnicity, your gender, it's gonna queue up very specific and relevant content. It screens your vision, it tests blood pressure. There's a scale built into the seat. You can capture your body mass index. It does a health risk assessment. We've also added assessments for cough and cold. We're working on one for smoking cessation, heart health, and others. These are wirelessly connected devices that connect people to local providers in the community. We allow people to track and turn the results. They can be sent to your phone. You can access the information at any kiosk in the network and also on the web. But probably what's most exciting, it happened about nine months ago and I got a call from Walmart that I waited for for four years. And the call went something like this, Bart, your pilots exceeded our expectations. How soon can you be in 2,000 stores? That changes the game. I can tell you we're growing very fast and we're proud to say we are now in over 2,500 locations throughout the country. Uh, we are interacting with two and a half million people on a monthly basis. We'll quickly be within a 10 minute drive time of 48% of the US population this is a big deal. It's a big deal for Georgia. It's a big deal for the healthcare system. It's a big deal for the health insurance companies who are looking to use this platform and an access point to reach consumers where they are. We don't need to necessarily have the government pay for everyone's health care. We need to empower people to take care of themselves, and we're doing it right here in Georgia. So I want to thank everyone, specifically in this room and in Atlanta community, for supporting Solo Health and our company. We're going places and it's just gonna be fun to watch. Thank you. Hello, Georgia Technology Summit. I'm Ian Campbell, one of the founders of Next Input. At Next Input, we are committed to improving the way that you interact with electronic devices, whether that device is a smartphone, a tablet, a switch in your car, or even an elevator button. Uh, we do that with our game-changing disruptive touch technology called Force Touch. Now, like other touch technologies on the market today that are actually in your existing iPad or iPhone, uh, Force Touch can sense the location of a touch point, so the X and Y location of where you're touching. But as the name implies, Force Touch can also recognize a third dimension, a new dimension, force, 
so that it can actually measure how hard you're touching that touch surface. It's what we call 3D touch. The reason that's important is because we can actually use that third dimension of touch to improve the way that you interact with an electronic device. So take a tablet. Let's say uh, it's 2014, you've gone and bought the new, new iPad, and hypothetically that includes force touch technology. Well, immediately you're gonna recognize that this uh, uh, iPad can improve everyday tasks like typing. We can tell, for example, if you meant to hit K or J just using that third dimension of force. Also, when you're relaxing, you're kicking back, relaxing, reading a, an ebook on that new iPad with force touch enabled, you'll be able to relax and just use your thumb and press harder or softer in one area of the touch screen to match your reading rate with your scroll rate. Also, force touch en enhances creativity. We can enable fine-tipped stylus support that's an order of magnitude improvement over the bulky capacitive styluses that you may be using with your iPad today. But tablets and smartphones, while they're a large market, they're not the only area of interest for Next Input. In fact, there's a lot of other markets where Next Input can add a lot of value. In particular, the automotive space is interesting because automotive touch applications are actually required to sense force. You don't want to accidentally activate your acceleration button on your cruise control when really you just were reaching for your, your radio button. And we'd like to invite you to come and check out Force Touch technology for yourself at our booth right outside. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Brad Lurie, the CEO of Bright Light Systems. Last year, we were honored to being one of the TAG top four finalists in the business launch competition. And this year, we're privileged to be recognized as one of the top 10 most innovative companies here in Georgia. And we're awfully proud to call Atlanta the home to Bright Light Systems, where we are an American manufacturer and an innovator in a very unique, archaic market. And I'd like to share a little bit about the innovation of what we're doing to change and drive innovation in a market that hasn't seen, that has seen nothing but stagnant and dormancy for the last 60 years. Many of you might recognize the metal halide lamp developed by General Electric in 1961. Well, Bright Light Systems is displacing this archaic technology, utilizing some of the latest breakthroughs with light emitting plasma. And so today, this lamp is replaced by this little tic tac. Now, <clears throat> The innovation in hardware is extremely important because it allows us, as you see in the graphic on the screen, to develop these pure white lights in the front. This is what you're looking at is a maritime port operation, something similar to the Georgia Port Authority down in Savannah. And in the background, you see the legacy archaic technology. Again, as I mentioned, from a hardware breakthrough, this industry hasn't seen a change in roughly 60 years. Bright Light Systems is taking that to the next level, combining that hardware breakthrough, integrating wireless controls, because we have the smart technology with our lighting. And by integrating wireless controls, we then tie this back to an energy data management platform that we've developed, which allows us not only to provide an energy efficient fixture, but also a smart solution that allows us to optimize and integrate lighting across a large acreage site. So what you see on the left is the incumbent legacy technology with this dull, dim yellow. There is an opportunity for a change, and Bright Light Systems is showing that on the right. And what we're ultimately driving towards is the ability to reduce our customers' energy consumption by up to 85%. It's roughly a 55 to 60% improvement on the light fixture itself, and then through the incorporation of the digitizing, the automation piece of it, we're driving another 30% of automation. So what's the punchline? The punchline is, is real, tangible net savings. What you see in the foreground is a port that we've replaced, and we've saved our customer over $925,000 annually. Thank you. Nanolumens got started to bring radical innovation to an industry that hadn't seen much. You might remember some of this. Your grandparents, 
house, black and white box you've been stuck in for decades, and then you grew up in a color box, which was really exciting, and now you get to go out and buy large color rectangles. A hundred years of innovation, and that's what you've got. A couple of years ago, we stood up here on this very stage and pulled out of a bag the first flexible display built in the country. And now we're in full-scale production, shipping around the world from Atlanta, Georgia. How do we do it? We designed a little thing called a Nixel. Think of thousands of little tiny iPhones stuck in a polymer matrix. It's actually nothing like that, but it's a good visual. <laughs> that allows us to build great big displays like this seven foot high, 15 foot round display that's hanging in a subway system right now. Or we can take it any shape and size and hang it in the NBA. If you watch that, you'll see our display. Or you go to Paris for MAC Cosmetics. Now, you don't generally see NBA and MAC Cosmetics in the same slide unless you're Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Subway stations in Brazil and TV stations. And then we got a call from one that I really love, Tokyo, Japan. They wanted displays. We're the only place that could get them. I made sure I was in the shipping dock when they put that label on the box that said Tokyo, Japan. Back to you, boys. Tides are changing. <laughs> And then Eli Lilly and HOK called us and said, we want for our lobby six foot high USA letters playing HD content and everyone tells us it can't be done. And I said, one of my many gifts is not being smart enough, no, it can't be done. 90 days later, we designed, built, innovated and delivered the first ever six foot high HD USA letters and now more and more folks are buying those around the country. Designed in America, built in America, Remember Draper University? Tim Draper called us a couple of months ago. He said, I'm building Draper University. I want the biggest, best display in the world, and I have an American Express card with no limit. <laughs> we said, we can help you. <laughs> Next month, we'll install at Draper University a nine-foot-high display that's 16 foot wide, two inches thick, on the wall, where he will show it off to everybody, designed and built here, and we took his American Express. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.